Good morning. Welcome to Morning Messages of Hope and Inspiration. My name is Jenny McBride, and in a few days, we're going to be celebrating Easter. On Sunday, one of my church leaders said, how do you celebrate Easter? How do you celebrate one of the most important events, or the most important event that has occurred on this earth? That Jesus Christ went into the Garden of Gethsemane and prayed and took upon himself all of our sins and suffering. And that suffering lasted through the crucifixion as he was whipped, beat, and placed on a cross and killed. And then three days later he was resurrected and appeared to Mary and the apostles. How do we celebrate as Christians this amazing event? And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I eat ham. Ham is an Easter thing we do, right? We eat ham, potatoes, we do Easter egg hunts. We might go to church and listen to a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music by choirs, almost angelic choirs. We hopefully remember him and we think about Jesus Christ. But I've really been pondering, what do I want to do to celebrate the life and ministry, the death and crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, my Savior? Like, what can I do? And one of the things I thought I need to do better at is sharing my testimony, my thoughts, my feelings, my experiences that I've had with my Savior with others. And that's a little scary. So notice I'm not wearing any makeup. (laughs) I'm being a little raw and sharing some of my experiences. I teach religion to youth and young adults. I teach about Jesus Christ and his gospel and the things he taught. How cool is that? I get to teach about Jesus Christ every day and testify of him and invite others to receive the gifts that Easter offers. I'm so grateful for that opportunity. But people come there wanting to hear about Jesus Christ. And I'm like, is there anything I can share that other people might be interested in? And I don't know if you're interested. But I would like to share a record and my personal scriptures, if you will, of my experiences with Jesus so that I have them. So when I'm having a hard time, I can listen to myself and be reminded of my enthusiasm, of my gratitude, and of my love for the Savior. So we've been talking about parables and Jesus Christ lately. And I have a parable of sorts that I would like to share, if that's okay, this Easter week. So when I was growing up, there were these cabinets called china cabinets. And china cabinets were usually like, at least six feet wide and six feet tall. And the top had these beautiful glass doors. And inside this china cabinet was china. And china was really fancy dishes and usually oriental of some sorts with these beautiful patterns on the outside. And they had a gold or silver lining around the out. And they were expensive dishes. And in the cabinet, there might also be goblets or crystals that were also very expensive. So growing up in the 70s and 80s, you can imagine, (laughs) um, it wasn't a time of a lot of prosperity. So these dishes and these glasses were very valuable. They were usually given to a couple when they got married. And the couple would go and register for these dishes and everybody might just buy a few dishes or grandma and grandpa might spend hundreds of dollars and buy the whole set. Do you have four, eight, 16, how many, 12, 16, whatever. What's your set? And you know when these dishes came out, when did mom and grandma open the cabinet doors and allow the kids to eat off the fancy china? And when these things came out as a kid, you were excited because you knew this was gonna be a good meal, good dessert, and this was fancy. We weren't excited about doing the dishes because you couldn't put those in the dishwasher. They were too fancy. But we were so excited to eat on these fancy dishes. And mom would say, be careful, don't break them. We can't find them anymore. Don't break them. So how often 
do you think we ate on these super fancy dishes? Christmas? New Year's, maybe. Easter? And maybe birthdays. Or maybe an anniversary. Or maybe a fancy dinner party. But these did not come out more than five times a year. 365 days a year. And these things come out maybe every other month. For a very special occasion. Because they're so expensive. And they're so valuable. They're so special. We're not going to use them. And it was a delight when we did. I grew up in the 70s and 80s. I grew up, I spent a lot of my time growing up in California and Utah. And in California, the majority of my friends believed in Jesus Christ. They went to church regularly, at least Christmas and Easter. And most of them, every, almost every week. We all went to church. We all believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. We all believed in prayer, and we believed that he died for us, and that he was resurrected. We all shared in this common belief. But I think we also shared in a common misunderstanding that Jesus Christ was only to be used on rare occasions because he was so valuable. He's the son of God. I mean, that's pretty valuable. But I think we sort of used him as like, well... We're only going to really talk to him or talk about him at Christmas or Easter or on really special occasions like weddings. That we almost take Jesus Christ or a statue of him, if you will, and put him in that china cabinet and close the doors to only open it if we really, really need him. Then we're going to open that door and we're going to ask for his help because we don't want to bother him unless it's really, really important. Now, I don't think any Sunday school teacher or any pastor or any leader of any church <laughs> intended for this understanding that we should only use Jesus Christ and his gift on rare occasions. The events that preceded his crucifixion and his resurrection when he went to that garden and asked his friends to stay with him. When he knelt in prayer and took upon himself all of our suffering, all of our sins, all of our pains, everything we would ever have to bear, all of our trials and challenges, our disappointments, our losses. When he took upon himself all of our pain, Why was he willing to descend below all? Was it only so we would use it on rare occasions, this gift? That suffering is the ultimate gift. That he is willing to take upon himself all of our suffering so we don't have to suffer. The consequences of our sin. The consequences of these trials and imperfections and the crazy world we live in. As this world is preparing for his second coming. The gift was never intended to be only used for really, really big sins. Which there are, and it should be used. But that was not the whole intent of Christ's suffering and his love. Christ loves us. He descended below all to lift us up so we could return to our Father's presence pure and clean. He descended below all and suffered all the pain, the mental anguish, depression, anxiety, mental illness, everything, so he would know how to sucker. The word sucker means to run to. He doesn't want to be closed into the cabinets. How can he run to us if we close him in? He wants to run to us, to give us aid, to help us. He suffered everything so he knows how to perfectly help us in our time of need. How to strengthen us to do the things that we've agreed to do. To empower us. To give us the patience when he can't take away the pain. His gift for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
was not this fine gift given at a wedding to be put in a china hutch and to be locked, to be only brought out on rare occasions. Jesus Christ is the literal Son of God with the mission to save and heal and redeem and strengthen and love. He wants to be part of our everyday life. I didn't ever put in an order for fancy dishes. I got a gift to hand me down once for my grandma and these dishes were rarely used. And it was a whole big box of these beautiful dishes and along with it came some silverware that my parents had bought my grandma and grandpa when they were in Japan before I was born. So my husband and I sort of got this gift and we decided we're gonna use this china every day. We're gonna use it. We're gonna throw it in the dishwasher. We're gonna use it every day. We're gonna use the silverware every day. Now, if anybody has the silverware dishes, I am interested in getting more because I love them so much. And I love that they remind me of my parents and my grandparents, but most importantly, they remind me of Jesus Christ and his gift. And then I don't wanna bring him out only a couple days a year. They're a reminder of me that he wants to come and sit at my table, that he wants me to pray to him, that he wants me to invite him into my life every day. So I use that china every day to remind me of him. I do not want to be a disciple of Christ who only goes to church on Sunday, Easter Sunday, and Christmas time to pray and talk to him. I don't want to be the disciple of Christ who only prays and asks for his help when I've really, really messed up. I want to be a disciple of Christ and a follower who follows him every day whose hand is linked in his and is begging for his strength and is relying on him every day, who's talking to him every day about little things and big things. Whether I'm concerned about my students or my husband or work or finances or health issues, I want him to be involved. I testify he does not want to be locked in a china cabinet. He doesn't want to be viewed as something so invaluable that we never ask for his help. It is the most valuable gift. It is. The gift of Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice and his crucifixion and his resurrection. This gift. No money. There's no price. It's so powerful. It's all encompassing. It's infinite in every way, shape, and form. And it's so cool that he's like, here you go. Please use me every day. I know these dishes are so valuable, but use it every day. I testify when we open up those cabinets and invite him to the dinner, we invite him into our lives, we're gonna have greater joy, we're gonna have greater strength, greater happiness. I know because I've experienced this, and I am embarrassed that I viewed him as a gift only to use on special occasions. And I'm so grateful that I've changed the way I viewed that. That I've been like, okay, time out. I don't want Jesus to be like my China. I want Jesus to be my best friend. And I testify he wants to be everyone's best friend and wants to help us all in matters great and small. And I say that in his beautiful name, Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share if you'd like some more messages of hope and inspiration. Thanks so much. Have a great day.